Hi, good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, we broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is then available on our website to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archived recordings. Um, and both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with anyone, uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the, have had on the show or any of our upcoming shows. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Uh, we're pretty much our only criteria that is something to do with libraries. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, for anyone who may be not local, um, we are the state agency for libraries um, in the state of Nebraska, and that's for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, um, schools, K-12 schools, correctional museums, anything that's a library, we're here for you. Uh, so we will have quite a mix of things here. We sometimes bring in, um, for the show, we do sometimes bring in guest speakers uh, to present, um, and then sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations on things that we are specifically offering through the Library Commission. And um, that's what we're doing today. This morning, uh, you've got me <laughs> um, presenting today for you about internships, uh, tips and tricks for internship success. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we have been offering internship grants for a while that I can't remember how long ago when it actually started. Um, probably at least 2008, if I'm remembering correctly, might be the oldest one. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, but we've been offering grants, internship grants for a while. Um, started out as part of the uh, Laura Bush 21st Century grants for librarians. Um, and now we're offering them with our own funding here to the state. Uh, so um, what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks if you are currently um, about to have an internship, if you're um, thinking about having an intern at some point, these will be useful for you. Um, I will give a, I will have, do want to give a shout out, out to, this is my first year running the internship grant program here at the Library Commission. Previously, and this was presentation and the whole program, um, I have to give um, credit to um, Mary Jo Ryan, who was our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission. She retired earlier this year. And Joanne McManus, who is our grants program manager here at the Library Commission still. Um, they both have ran, they ran the internship uh, grant program for the last few years, um, and as I said, Mary Jo retired, and Joanne is now very much involved in our Library Innovation Studios grant program, so um, they have passed it on to me, but um, I do give credit to them. They um, This presentation, all the, they've given me a lot of tips and tricks and information about how to um, run this for you all. So as I see here on the first slide here, the internship grant program is supported by IMLS Pro funding. That is because we get our funding from there, so this is a, a notice you do need to put on anything related to it. So um, we have a, um, I've noticed I'm looking at who is uh, logged in and registered for today, and we have a mixture of people here. Um, some of you have received a, a notification that you have received, um, your, have been awarded your internship grant um, funding. Uh, for either a regular grant or we did offer grants, um, provide grants to library innovation studios libraries. Um, or you may just be interested in tips if you're thinking about wanting to do an internship grant in the future. Um, actually, there might be three types of audiences now that I think about it. Um, some people who maybe have had an internship grant in the past and might want to share some of what you've done. Um, that would be great. So throughout the show, if you have had one in the past um, and if you want to chime in about anything, um, your, your tips and tricks for how you handled your internships and your interns, that would be great. Um, all right, so, and I will make a note here that it is the 2019 Library Internship Grant Program, but we had mistakenly put 2018 on our paperwork when we started this at the end of last year. I apologize for that, but you are receiving your funding in 2019, so that is what it is actually labeled as, is the 2019 uh, Internship Program. Let me do this. 
All right, so what is the secret to having a successful internship? The number one thing that um, you might need to be thinking about, that is planning. Um, over the years of doing this program, uh, previous staff who've worked on it and libraries who've been involved in it have mentioned very much so that, that planning ahead for this, these um, interns that you're gonna be bringing into your library is very important. Um, a quote from one of our previous um, libraries, actually, planning makes all the difference. The detailed calendar was extremely useful, kept us on track. Um, we actually have a lot of resources on our internship website that I'll show you um, that they are mentioning there. So planning, planning, planning ahead of time and throughout the internship um, is very uh, important. Uh, so for example, have you ever been in a situation where you have started a new job um, or uh, acquired about a job and didn't seem to get any good information from them. They didn't seem to know the supervisor what they were looking for, uh, what the job duties were, what they might want you to be doing, um, who you might be interacting with. Um, or did you start the job and um, there was nothing for you to do? The, you, they hadn't planned any activities for you. They hadn't planned an orientation. Um, you sat around all day with nothing to do for your first few days or week or two, wondering, you know, why am I here? <laughs> what am I doing here? Um, and Or felt like you were just kind of like not much to do. That is um, something maybe uh, many of us have encountered, and it was not a good way to start things out. We don't want you to, you or your intern to have to have the same kind of issue, so we want you to plan ahead. Um, and with the internships now, with the, the job you maybe have uh, that you're starting and that you're going to be in for an extended period of time, you do have a lot more time to work on something like that. But with these short-term internships, many of you are only doing them for the length of the time you're gonna have the intern is only gonna be two to three months. Um, if that, some of them are a little longer. Um, you don't have the luxury of the time to, to waste trying to get things going and figure it out after you've already got them on board, um, after you've, they've already you know showed up at your library. So um, you don't want to, um, no time to gradually catch up and say, okay, don't worry about it today. We'll have you do a couple of things and, you know, come back next week and then we'll get, you know, figured out. There's not enough time when you're only going to have them for a couple of months uh, to do that. So it's very important to not waste their time and not waste your time um, with uh, trying to figure out afterwards, um, too late, what you um, want to do. So as far as the funding, um, how can you even afford one of these internships? Um, for those of you who have um, received our grants, we have our internship grants for up to $1,000. Some are getting 1,000, some 500, um, depending on what you wanted. Um, we've had some libraries, this is a great opportunity to show that you might need the extra staff too for later and then to increase, um, you know, go to your funding people to help increase your, um, to add extra staff to your library. We actually have had at more than one library in Nebraska actually start out with an intern for the year, for the summer, or however long they had them for, and they were able to show very clearly by tracking what this person did, what they needed them for, how it helped and improved the library services, and then turn that over into um, having their um, municipality give them the extra staff person, the extra slot for them. So um, that is, um, a nice side effect. Um, but any library can be created with, if you don't even receive an internship grant from us if you didn't apply for one, um, check and see if you can raise funding from somewhere else to do this. This was, as I said here, this is a thousand dollars we're giving just for a couple of months. So if you can have a fundraiser, um, see if you want to partner with a local business, you'll notice when, we, when I talk about some of the interns, um, internships that we are funding this year, um, they're collaborations with other organizations um, in their area or in their town. So it doesn't have to just be the library uh, having to come up with the funding for this. So um, get creative and see if you want to have an intern uh, brought in um, if you didn't apply for this year's internships with us. Uh, there are a couple of ways that you can provide um, payment to your interns. You can hire them um, as a part-time temporary employee and pay them an hourly wage. Or you can do a stipend based internship and um, provide them with um, payments that way. Um, so you can do just a regular, you know, you, you like to pay your employees, um, or if you do a stipend. Uh, we suggest that you don't, don't 
first, if you do decide to go with a stipend, don't wait to the end. Just pay them all the money after at the end. Give them a couple of chunks of it, you know, maybe 500 halfway through the uh, interim period and the other 500 at the end, or divide it up how you want. Um, when we provide our um, funding to you, you'll you'll submit a form to us, request for payment, and we'll give you all the funding right up front. Um, and you can decide then how you are going to um, distribute it out to um, the intern or interns. Um, if you you are can have more than one, I know there's at least one. I can't remember if there's more than one, at least one of ours this year that they are actually hiring two people and they're each going to be get uh, $500 each as their internship. Um, many of them are just doing a thousand for one person, but um, or 500 for one person, but you can have more than one if you want to. Just checking on my notes here. All right, so how much do you pay them? Um, for a stipend or based uh, for adults and an employee, you must do um, equivalent to or more, depending on what you can do, what is the uh, minimum wage. And here in Nebraska, the uh, minimum wage is $9 an hour. So you would have to pay that for a stipend um, or an hourly wage of a minimum of that. You can do more depending on if you think you can do that. There is an exception if you are hiring student workers. Um, this is the, you know, because we do say you can bring in high school students to be the, the intern for you if you want to. Um, you can choose to pay what they call a training wage of at least in the rules here in Nebraska are 75% um, of Nebraska's minimum wage. Um, this is up to set the um, 90 days if that's um, so the beginning of their um, time with you if they happen to go longer. Um, that would be 675 an hour is the math if you do that. Um, that is optional. That is up to you to decide if you want to give the, the, the teens uh, a lower rate or if you want to just give them the same $9 an hour as you would um, to anyone who is an intern and not um, um, do it lower. That is up to you to decide how you want to do it. Uh, but do check with your city or county or whatever municipality you're involved in to see if they have guidelines. These are, you know, there's certain state rules that we have here and we just pass on that information to you to, to, you know, to know um, what, the, what, what the basics are. But definitely do check to see um, if there is something local. Does your city um, or county or whoever you're working work with have their own rules about providing stipends or having interns um, involved at your library. Make sure that you're following all the rules. Now, um, so that's the, some of the basics about the thinking about how to pay them. That's something to think about first. You know, how are you going to pay? Um, how much is it going to be? Um, then you need to think about your goals. What are your, what is your reason for having these in, this intern? Um, determine what you want to have them um, accomplish for the library or for themselves. Um, here, and if you are a part of the our, our internship grant program, we do have specific goals that we um, ask you to meet. Um, the idea of our internship grant program, the over, overall thing, is trying to bring new librarians or new library staff into the field to um, encourage them and convince them to become a librarian, to go potentially to go to a library school program. Uh, so we want to show them what it's really what it is like to work in a library. So you want to number one, and um, these are the rules for our program, involve them in actual real library work. What your library staff does, uh, not sweeping the floors or just being you know the the cleaner, um, maintenance type person. Although that is something that some of us in our uh, <laughs> Uh, solo library uh, locations do do um, so in your you know of course you by situation whatever is actual work that you as library staff are, um, need to do um, show them provide them with a, a view of what libraries are all about what we do um, you you may have um, them working on a special project like some reading program or updating your website. Um, you know, you may have that as be, this is the main thing we need. We're, we're very busy in the summer. We have quite a few of our internship grants this year that are involved with the, the upcoming summer reading program, A Universe of Stories. Uh, you may have them working on that or working in your makerspace or working with some sort of collaboration with someone. But give them a little bit of everything else too. 
take them, you know, to show them, you know, you're going to be working on this specific project, but one week of the grant, one or two weeks, maybe take them and just show them, have them shadow other people in, in the library. Um, the cataloging department, interlibrary loan, um, putting up displays. Um, if they're not working with the summer reading program, have them see at least for a week or a day or two, what does a children's librarian, the children's staff do? So give them a little taste of it. Try to, if you can, give them a little taste of everything, even if you do have them focusing on, we have this one project we need them to get done for us. Um, and then um, we want to use this as a recruitment tool to view this as a, live, a career they might want to go into. So provide them with information about educational resources and job opportunities. Uh, where you know where can they get where can they go to an online join an online program to go to library school or what do we have locally through UNO or the UNK programs um, things local that they can attend. Uh, some of our um, previous internships have also taken them. If you know, if you're do, you were at a public library doing this grant, taking them on field trips of sorts to other types of libraries to see what it's like to work at a university library, or a school library, or or a museum that you might have nearby. Take them and have them spend a day or two at that or that library type of library to see how they do things there and how it's different from what's done at the public library. Uh, you never know where they might want to end up in their career. So for our people in our internship grant program, the ultimate goal is to bring more people into the field in this way. But in addition to that, you will have your own goals at your library for what you need to have done, what you're looking for as an extra staff person to do something. Have you been short staffed for a while? Has your budget been cut? Um, and you're, you're you know, really trying to just, you know, keep up with things, or do you want to start something new? Um, having a new program um, added to, to what you're doing. Uh, start doing something. Do you, do you not have a library website and need it to be created? Or has your has it kind of fallen by the wayside uh, due to time constraints? Uh, do you want to get involved in social media now? Do you want to have a Facebook page or an Instagram account or anything else out there? And you need someone else to investigate how you should do that and the best way to do that and, um, and maintain it for you. I know um, it does take a lot to learn a lot of these new things. There's always something new coming up in social media and you might not have the, 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 desire or the where will all do that yourself, but some of these college or high school students, they're on top of it anyways, they can quickly boom, 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 create you some, some um, information out there. Um, anything else that you might be having doing at your library, some new idea you have, some new event coming up. Last year we had a, a, quite a few of our internship grants were because were to help out with um, something new and, and, and different that isn't a usual summer event, uh, the eclipse. This, the uh, solar eclipse that happened in August. There was it was a huge deal and many libraries had extra programming they were doing, special programs they were doing for that, and um, decided we'll get an intern to come in and help us with that. That's two years ago, sorry, it's 2017, yeah. <laughs> Um, does anybody have any other ideas of what you could would use an intern for? If you want to, you can type them into the questions section there and let us know. Um, or what you might be doing this year. I, I have some more information later in the presentation about what's going on, but any ideas that you have about what you might want to do? Notes. All right, so once you have figured out what either our goals are for the grant or what your goals are, you need to figure out a work plan. How are you going to achieve these goals? What specific things uh, need to happen? What do the duties need to be of the intern and the staff working with the intern on whatever the project is that you're going to have them involved in or whatever work you're going to have them um, involved in? Uh, now, those of you who have actually applied for the internship grant this year and did receive it, um, I've already described that in, in your application, um, and that's great. So you probably have something already good to go. Some of them were a little more um, an outline, and you might want to now that you know you're going to be getting the intern work on some of the more detailed things, like week one, we'll do this, week two, we'll do this. Week three and four, you'll now be working on that, and the actual day of the event is so-and-so day, whatever. Um, so 
work on the um, specifics of what they might need to do. But things might change and that is okay. <laughs> um, that just because you said you wanted to come up with something when you su submitted these applications last fall, a uh, situation may change, you may, uh, some, some new idea may have come up, or once you find out who you, pick who your intern is, that might change your ideas about what you might want to um, use them for. Uh, so do you have to stick to that? No, you can change up what you want to do if, if possible, if, if necessary. We want you to, I mean, it, it depends on what's happening. Um, but we do want you to make sure that the student has a good experience and is, um, you know, enjoying what they're doing and learning something, that you at the library are getting something out of it as well, um, and everyone ends up in the end um, having something that is um, useful to them. Uh, so it is possible that you may need to make changes to what you originally submitted and that is okay. Um, if you are uh, doing one of our grants, just let me know. Um, if you are throughout the grant um, time and the time you have the intern, um, you will be you know, keeping in touch with me, of course, with just updates on what's going on. Um, I want to talk more about that in a bit. But if you do decide that you're gonna make adjustments to what your original plan was, um, like we were gonna use them for our summer reading program, but it turns out they're really good at social media, so we're switching things up when we want to have them help them enhance that. That's fine. Just let us know. Shoot me an email to let me know that you've changed what you're doing, and here's the reason why, and I'll just add that to your file, no problem, so that we know exactly what we're tracking when you are working um, with them. So just keep me in the loop is basically the main idea there. <laughs> Now, next thing to decide about your interim is the timing of it. Now, many of you have already done your applications, of course, and you already know when you're gonna be doing it, but you're, if you're interested in doing an internship, um, this is something to think about, and which some of our applicants, I'm sure, did, is um, figure out what is the best time to have an intern. I know um, you need to figure out when can this, when is a student available. If they're a college student, when are they on break? Um, if they're a high school student, when does the school year end? I know I did have, one or two people who applied for for our internship grants this year asked me about, well, what if we can't even get the student until May, June, whatever? Um, but we, you know, want something. You want to start with them before that. What if the school year doesn't end? And it's fine if you start them out with either wait until the school year is over and they're done with that completely and are uh, totally available to you. Or if you want to start them out with less hours at the beginning of the grant, like when they're still in school, just come in on a Saturday afternoon for a couple of weeks and we'll get you, uh, you know, acclimated and orientated to what we're doing. And then when school ends, then we put you into the full schedule and start really working on things. Um, recommendation here too from experience of previous one is maybe not starting a grant at your busiest time I know many people specifically apply for the internship grant because um, they need help at their busiest time during the summer with summer reading with other programs and and projects going on uh, and that is fine um, but you want to make sure you maybe have them start before the first day of summer reading program that you have scheduled. Give them an orientation, get them up to speed on things before the actual event you want them working on. You know, don't just throw them in um, right in the middle of that. Um, and then it depends also on what your intern you want them to be for. Do you want them to do something else like updating a website, uh, doing some sort of weeding project, something that it's not when it happens isn't quite as important, you might adjust and say, we're gonna have the intern um, actually before the summer gets really busy or after summer is done. So, you know, all that crazy summer stuff is done so that we, you know, they can concentrate on that. We didn't need them for that. So it will depend on what the duties um, are gonna be. Um, but for the grant that we are doing here, everything does need to be wrapped up by the end of November. So do keep that in mind if you are doing one of our grants. Um, the end of November is when all of the activities that they may be doing need to be finished up. Um, that's when we start up for doing, if we will have the funding to do the next year's grants. So think about your timing. Um, once you've got some of that figured out, your goals, what you want them to do, you need to start recruiting. 
you need to start um, putting out feelers and figuring out um, what you want um, now that you, you know what your goals are going to be, you know what the project's going to be, you know what time is going to be, um, you need to figure and uh, start looking for them. So what to do these specific tasks that you want them to do, what is what you're going to want in, in a person. Um, this is going to be just like doing um, a job interview for a regular job. It shouldn't really think of it any different than that. The duties are this. What is the best skills that I'm going to need? What is the age range for potentially for what I'm doing? Um, is a younger high school student okay? Do I need a college or older student? Um, does it not matter? Um, it's going to depend on what um, you're doing, um, what how you're going to uh, deal with all this. Uh, now, as far as um, doing someone who is under 16, there is some extra work you would have to do if you end up with somebody who is uh, younger. Um, it is okay to have someone who is an intern that young, but you do have to take some extra steps. Um, there will be restrictions on how much they can work, um, number of hours, which days of the week they can do, whether it's school year uh, versus uh, summer break or weekends. Um, and you also need to work with the school, um, if it is during the school year, to get a specific, specific employment certificate from them to allow them to work with you. Um, now, here in Nebraska, these are the rules that we have about limitations on working with um, 14, 15-year-olds. And I wouldn't probably go much long, younger than that for an intern, generally for the kind of things people are doing for this. This is when they're maybe getting started thinking about what they might want to do with their life, what their career might be, and this is a good way to um, get them in, you know, interested in libraries. So um, these are some of the rules. If it is um, Monday through Friday during the school, they can only work a maximum of three hours between three, and at the latest they can work is 7 p.m. Um, weekends, eight hours, also only till 7 p.m. But then during the summer hours, they can work later till nine o'clock. Um, so it's a little more, you have a little more time for them on um, in the summer hours. So that is something that you need to um, pay attention to is how many hours they'll work. But um, also, and that's what we have it highlighted here, how late at night they can work. Many times we do have programs or events that you're doing that are in the evenings. And if you're going to have this student working with you on in any of those programs, they have to be done and leaving the library during the school year at 7 and during the summer by 9 p.m. So if you wanted them to help run something and do the event and then uh, wrap it up, clean up afterwards, put away the supplies, put away the tables and chairs, whatever, all of that work too, the cleaning up has to be finished before the 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. hour depending on the time of year. So um, do keep that in mind if you are ending up with someone who is um, in a younger age. And we have a couple links there uh, about the roles of the Department of Labor from the Nebraska um, state of Nebraska um, and specifics about 14 and 15 year olds. So check that out to make sure you have all the paperwork done if you do end up with someone um, younger. All right, so any questions so far, please type into your question section. Let me know if you have anything you want to know more about. If there's anything you're confused about that I've mentioned, um, if anything I haven't mentioned yet, uh, go ahead and type in the questions. All right, so once you've figured out all those basics, what, what, um, how you're going to hire someone? Is it going to be a part-time an employee stipend? What the actual job's going to entail? What skills you want? Um, are you going to go with uh, college, high school? Um, what the project is going to be? All the basics of what you want. That's after you've got all that figured out. Then you start your search. Start recruiting for them. And so how do you do this? There are quite a few different resources, just like uh, doing a job search. Um, your local resources, newspapers, classified ads, uh, writing an article for the paper. If there's something that you write for your local newspaper or local newsletters about things going on at the library, you can promote and say, the library has been awarded an internship grant of $1,000 and we're looking for someone, high school, college student, to be um, help work at the library. Um, contact the school, um, your local high school or colleges community colleges, universities, um, have them help you promote it. Um, I know some uh, times if uh, the 
one of our libraries had talked previously about these, they told the school, the high school, that they were looking for an intern and they posted to their social, their own social media, their Twitter account, their Facebook account. So partner with them to get the word out for you. Uh, some of our libraries have mentioned, I know a library did mention a year or two ago, that they actually, they posted it to their library Facebook page, so their, your own library's social media, of course, um, anywhere you do things. And parents who followed the library on Facebook mentioned it to their kids, who maybe were not on Facebook, you know, different you're learning as things change. Different age groups and different people use different services. And, um, and the parents let the kids know, hey, I saw this on my on the Facebook. Why don't you reach out to the library and apply for it? And that's how they got some of their interns. So uh, trickle down from anyone could get the word out. Um, here in Nebraska as well, the Department of Labor has the internne.com website. This is a place where you can post for paid internships in Nebraska. So if you go to that, that website, internne.com, there is a login for um, businesses. And since you are doing a paid internship, you can um, sign up there and register to use that and have it just broadcast as an internships available in the state of Nebraska to reach out more. So if someone is then looking to be an intern somewhere, they would be looking at that. Here on our Library Commission website, we have a jobs page, a job and careers page. Uh, now hiring at your library is what it's called, and that's the URL that I'll show it to you um, in a bit, um, everything on our website. And so if you want to, you can use um, our website to promote the internship. It's a paid job, so we are happy to have it on there. We do write you know, your traditional you know, full-time positions posted there, but any of your interns that you want to promote and use that, you can do that. Um, I know some people also, you already had someone in mind who you wanted to be your intern who were applying, and that is fine too. If you discover that there is someone who is uh, very interested in the library, who's been very helpful already, uh, who you think would really um, do well, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine to um, focus on them and say, hey, we're going to get an intern grant for you. Um, we're going to apply for this funding so that we can bring you on, not just a volunteer for free, but actually pay you to do some special work. And that is fine as well. Has anybody used anything else, any other ways to um, get the word out about that you have an internship um, opportunity available? Oh, there it is. The internne.com, I knew I had it here somewhere, is the Nebraska Department of Economic Development runs the internships page um, for the state of Nebraska. All right. So, uh, You've gotten the word out and you've gotten some applications. So now you need to, um, if you've got multiple people applying, interview them and pick who you want to um, be your intern. So if you are hiring um, an employee, a part-time employee, so paying them a salary, do check with your city, county, your municipality, see what their rules are, if they have any guidelines for doing interviews. If you do have multiple applicants, you will have to do an interview process to pick who you want to do. Um, but check with them to see how you must do this. And if you've hired anybody at your library before, you hopefully know these rules. Um, if you're doing a stipend arrangement, you probably don't need to be that structured. It's different. You're, you're, um, it's, there's not any rule, because since you're not hiring them as actual employee, it can work a little more easier. But do take the interview process seriously. This is a, um, a real job. Treat them just as if you were doing an interview for an actual full-time position. Um, if you show them that this is important to you, um, and something serious that you're doing, they will take that same attitude with them. Um, it has real opportunities, as real job of consequences. This isn't just some fun summer thing that I don't even have to you know, be serious about. If you treat it with the same um, same same as you would any other type of job, then they will come into it with the same attitude and realize this is important. 
Um, have other people, if you have other staff at your library that may be involved in them, involve them in the interview process as well. Don't just you know take it on yourself as a director. If you're, they're going to be working with your youth librarian or your makerspace person or with anyone you're collaborating in, um, get a couple of people's opinions on this. You know, for especially for high school students and college students, um, high school students maybe more who haven't gone through a real formal, that's what it's looking for, formal interview process before, this would be a great experience for them, a great, great um, way to, you know, get their, you know, test the waters and see how this process works. So give them that same um, experience as you would for anyone. And specifically for your grant, though, figure out what questions you need to ask them ahead of time. Have a have ahead of time based on the goals, based on the project that you want. Um, what do what do we need to ask them about? Um, find out what kind of skills do they have? Are they dependable to you know, become to work regularly? Um, the social skills needed to be a library. They work in a library. Um, they need to deal with the public. They will need to deal with, as many of you know, unhappy public. <laughs> Uh, demanding public, uh, how will they handle that situation? Will they be okay with either, either dealing with themselves or having the knowledge and ability to find someone else to help so that they can, you know, I'm not, I'm not up for this. I'm going to go get someone in charge. Um, as you're going through the um, interview process, you may also learn that they might have talents or interests in other areas that might be better than what you were thinking of or different. And this goes back to what I was talking about, about maybe you discover after you've interviewed people or picked your intern that you actually want them to work on something else because you found out they are really good at something you hadn't even thought about. So feel them out for other things. Don't just focus on just what you need them for, that you think you need them for, you know, let them talk about themselves, what else are they interested in, what other skills they have that are beyond what's in the job description, and see if you might then tweak the internship to fit the intern. And that is a perfectly fine thing to do. Just let me know what you're doing. Um, so before you do have the interview, determine what your criteria are going to be for picking the person. Do they have to meet that certain minimum requirements and certain, you know, things that they say or don't say or are able to talk about? Figure that out so that, as this is like I said earlier, this is a quick process. This is a short-term internship. Um, you've just been told that you've got the grant monies. We're going to be getting paperwork out to you soon, and you're going to have to get on top of this and get them started. Some of you I know, I think the earliest ones are starting in April hoping that by April having someone in place in the process and the um, program started. So get this all figured out ahead of time. So after you've done all the interviews, you get to um, select your intern. Yay, and hopefully you've picked the great intern, the perfect intern for your library. <laughs> Um, once you have picked them, you decide when their start date will be. Um, I know some of you had some ideas of when, but you have to work with them on their schedule, potentially, depending on their school work. Um, keep all of your staff involved and, uh, and in the loop about what's going on, that you are going to have this intern coming in, what they're specifically going to be working with, um, but what they might be able to um, also look at. Remember, we want them to learn about libraries in general as hopefully as part of this every little thing that the uh, you know, libraries do even if you have them there for a particular purpose that's great make sure that everyone on staff is on the same page with you as in we want to encourage this person to be a common librarian in the future so give them a good experience make sure everybody is on um on board with it um, decide if you are going to tweak that plan. Did you discover that this intern can actually work on something else? So double check that um, before they, they come in so that they, you know when they come in the first day, hey, we found out that you're great at this, we're going to do this now. Um, be flexible though about your timeline and what could happen. I probably most, I, I can, more than half of our internships over the years have had to change things up because of things happening. Uh, different times someone's available, uh, something comes up and they have to switch things. It's okay to have a timeline of week one, two, three, four, whatever you're going to do things in during, but be aware that you might need to be flexible with them and they might be, need to be flexible as well. Um, and we do have on our website some uh, resources to help you with all of this organization and timeline and I'll show you where those are later as well. 
Uh, so you're, you will want to have a timeline of some sort so you know for the three months, two months you have them, what you're going to do each week, um, what you're going to introduce them to so that you just keep them going and don't get you know, bogged down in we're still trying to catch up on the previous thing. Um, and, and you want to share information while you, you know, so, so just keep, keep a timeline going of what you're going to do, but mix into that, like I said, how great you're, I, you love your job. <laughs> you love being a librarian. We all want to bring in more people, more libraries, librarians into the field. So as you are doing it throughout the, the internship, share information about where they can, how they can work in the library field, uh, where they can get more education for this. We have had multiple interns that have followed up either going to library school um, afterwards, or they maybe already were in library school. Um, and we know, I know of at least one or two libraries who have actually hired the intern as an on, as a permanent employee afterwards. So, um, and that's the perfect that's the perfect ending to one of our um, intern grants. That's what we're looking for here. <laughs> So when you have the intern, after you've gotten them acclimated and orient, or gone through orientation and got them doing things, you want to follow their progress. You want to track what they're doing on an ongoing basis so um, that you can report to us. Um, there will actually be a couple of surveys to do for both you and the intern themselves uh, beforehand and before the, you start and afterwards um, just to see how things went. So you're going to want to keep track of all of that. Um, and in case you need to make adjustments, uh, keep up with what they're doing. If they make sure they know what they're doing, if they're going quicker than you thought, they're learning things really fast and finishing up what you thought would take, you know, two days to do some sort of project and they only took um, one day, then you need to, you know, keep, be able to jump them on to the next assignment very quickly. Um, make sure that they can ask questions of you. Make sure that you are um, letting them you know, give you advice, give you ideas, question, and it is something interesting. You may learn how some things are done, it's always been done that way, <laughs> and the intern questions it and wonders, why am I doing this? What is the reason? And you might learn that you can adjust some things you do at the library. So what does lead to a good experience for the intern? Um, ultimately, you want everyone to have a good experience in the end. Um, of course, the intern, they get they, they, their money, <laughs> the $1,000 we're giving them or however much you have for your internship grant um, for your money. Um, but they can gain the experience. They can use it for on uh, job applications for future jobs and college applications if they're still in high school, um, other internships, uh, networking with librarians that they might meet at their library or out in the field if you go on field trips to other libraries. Um, we know some of our interns have met not necessarily at the library they worked at as the intern but when they went to other organizations and met with them and discovered oh I did this internship at the uh, public library and we took a trip over to the university and that seemed really cool I think I'm gonna look into that um, getting in the in the field anyway is great um, they will make a difference you know we I don't know got into the library field and like it because we like to help people we like to get them what they need and and you know help them out um, making a difference to them so that's something else that they will hopefully come away with um, and then for your library uh, you may learn some things that as I said as I was mentioning before that uh, you didn't really think about it your library. Change is good. They can help um, bring a new sp perspective to something you're doing. They may, they will ask questions, encourage them to ask questions about not just what they're doing, but why. They might not understand a rule or a policy or a procedure because remember, they are new to all of this, totally coming in potentially blind. Um, so it, it will help you, you know, take another look at what you're doing um, at the library. Um, you may get new customers. They see a new face of the library, someone who they want to come and interact with and, and see what programming they're doing. Um, and you'll have some, every, anything, whatever project you have in mind will be fresh and new, a new website, a new program, um, new staff. Now, some of the resources I mentioned to you earlier uh, that are now hiring at your library website with the internships page there, where we have a schedule of activities 
um, there that you can use a sample orientation plan uh, that you can you can just take and so these are all word documents you can just print off and, and tweak for yourself um, and then we also have a link this is really good this is also for the Department of Economic Development Nebraska's um, the employers guidebook to developing a successful internship program um, this is this is a good little booklet that it's in a PDF you can print it out if you want to or just use it on your devices really good step-by-step of, from beginning to end of doing an internship, similar to what I did here, but with a lot more detail because it's all down there. Um, and then the internne.com website for um, posting your internships. All right. Now, any other questions we have right now before we go on to the specifics, um, some more specifics of our grant? You type into the question section, let me know. I think I will pop over and show you on our website here. Um, this is the Library Commission's webpage, and the under our grants flyout menu, our flyout menu here for grants funding and E-rate, way over here in the middle is our internships grants page. Um, and this is where you applied um, in the first place. Um, we have our goals here, but if we scroll down through, this is some of the basics of doing it, we do have our links to the resources I was telling you about. Uh, timeline and schedule of internship activities, so this is something that you can use to, um, and this is a, a suggested timeline, uh, when you would advertise, when you would set up interviews, um, when the first day of the internship would start, and what you would do each week of the internship. So you can break it up into different, you know, small bits um, and see how you want to do your timeline. There is also the library orientation plan. Um, so basically, once they do show up, what are you gonna show them? This is a sample, of course. This is not everything you have to do, but this is give you, this is a pretty broad of just pretty much everything the library does. So you can pick and choose from this which things you might be doing. Um, and then that guidebook, the employer's guidebook, developing a successful internship program. Uh, this is a, let's say, about a 30 page document, um, which has got some great information about what is an internship, the intern any website. Um, designing the program and this is going to say a lot of things about a business but these are totally apply to any intern um, it doesn't have to be um, just about um, businesses us uh, libraries can use it as well all right So those are the resources on our website that you can um, that can be helpful to you when you are um, developing your plan. So specifically for the grant that we are offering at the library for the Library Commission, um, we are working on the paperwork for you right now. Um, we hope to have um, we've done a little caught up in other things, but hopefully before by the end of this week we'll have everything um, out in the mail to the libraries who did receive the grant. If there's an agreement that you will sign. There's going to be two copies of that that will be sent to you. You'll sign both, send one back to us, and then there's a request for payment form. You sign that as well and return that to us. That is then we will send out a um, check from the library commission or, or uh, triggers the payment from um, the state to, to your library. Um, and so you'll have the funding that you can use to pay um, your intern. Um, the internship, of course, cannot start before the agreement is signed. Um, you have to you know, sign on that officially. And as I said, must be concluded by November 30th of this year, November 30th, 2019. Um, most of you, that seems pretty good. I think most people start, as I said, their start date was thinking April, and I think the latest one was going through September. Remembering correctly. So I think you guys will all be good. Um, some people have asked me, can we start advertising and letting people know we already have this? Yes, because I did send you all emails letting you know that it's you've gotten the grant. And I know some people wanted to start right away to get, at least get the process going. Um, we'll get the paperwork for you to make this all formal um, ASAP. Um, there we go. 
programs. So the intern that you select, the specifics for our grant, they may be either a high school or a college student. Uh, homeschooled high school student is fine. Um, and graduate, up to graduate student level. Um, Non-traditional student uh, is fine. Um, we have had some older, we've had some younger high school kids, we have had some older graduate school level, um, and anything in between just does have to be a student. Um, however, they cannot have been employed um, in the past uh, or currently by a library, not just yours, or an intern previously. So they have to be someone new just for the first time. Um, volunteers are fine. If you had somebody who's been volunteering at the library and doing really good, I know we have at least one application that's just looking at this morning uh, that they have this volunteer that has been great for the library. And now they want to bring her um, more into it by paying her to do some things. And that is fine. Volunteers are fine. They just can't have been previously an employee or an intern um, in the past. The grant funding are only for um, wages and any withholdings related to those wages. So this is all this money, the $1,000 we're giving you or 500 or however much you're getting from us is specifically only to pay them. It has not, there is nothing else that it can go to. It's not for programs or, or materials or anything. This is just the paycheck to the person that you are hiring, whether it's done as a stipend or as a part-time employee. Um, and they do also have to include in that the fact the the calculations for the withholding um, a, a, with wages for taxes and whatnot. Um, there is a form the library director will will be getting to you uh, um, at the end, near the end of the grant, um, the attestation form about how the funds were expended. So that's the, the paperwork involved in it. Um, now there are some specific responsibilities for people involved in the grant. Uh, the supervisor, you want to or orient your student to and give them an overview of what we do at this library. Um, uh, track their hours. Um, make sure you're keeping track of how much because it's something you will be reporting to us on. Um, there are, as I mentioned, there's going to be some surveys that I'm going to be sending you links to uh, uh, assessment um, that the supervisor will do, a survey monkey thing that we have, and then um, the intern themselves will do a, um, at the beginning of their internship and at the end of the internship, their own little surveys. These aren't huge long documents, just trying to get an idea of what they were thinking when before they started and now what they're thinking about libraries after the internship is over. Um, all of this information we will share with you, of course, too, so um, both us at the Library Commission and you at your libraries can learn from what happened at your internship and with your intern. Um, as far as doing publicity on it, we did put out a press release I think it was on the 24th. Um, it's on our Library Commission blog uh, that we you, you can use to promote yours. You can take text from it. Um, if you need to, you can contact me and we can get you a print copy of that if you want to um, use that. But of course, put out your own if you want to. Uh, do credit the Library Commission on anything with just this text here. If you've done a grant with us before, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, you can use that information. So anybody have any questions about uh, doing a grant, doing the promotion, hiring an intern, um, anything you want to know? Um, the, the rest of my slides here, I'm going to give you some ideas and let you know what's been going on with the applications we did get. So if you have any specific questions, type them in. Nobody's asked anything yet. Um, I hope that doesn't mean that I've put, I've, I've, Covered every, I hope that means I might have covered everything you need to know. <laughs> um, but you do have anything you want to know about it. Oh, thank you, Lori. Lori was one of our previous libraries uh, uh, and, um, and um, has another one this year too, don't you? Yes. Yes. One of our regulars. <laughs> All right, well, if you do have any questions, you can always contact me. Um, what I want to do now is um, talk about what our current grants that we're doing this year have um, told us they're going to do with their interns. And this is what they currently want to do. Uh, so if you um, are one of our libraries, you might see some of your things here. But if you're not sure about what you would do with an, with an, with an intern, this can give you some thoughts and ideas on um, what projects you might be able to um, get them involved in. So um, we've done 34 um, grant applications were funded this year. Uh, these are our regular grants. 
And we also did another 12 to our library innovation studios libraries. I mentioned that to you at the beginning. We have the maker spaces that we're putting in, um, equipment that we're putting in libraries. And um, they are all getting an intern specifically to um, work with the makerspace equipment that we are giving them. But other than that, we had another 34 applications for other things beyond that. Um, Okay, we do have a question here. Um, so someone says we will use the help of the intern for do, oh a STEM STEM grant. Great. Um, so someone is an intern. Is library pay for the training? Oh, the question is, I know that seven people we trained during the process of the STEM grant, and one is the intern. Does the library pay for the training of the intern? Um, is this for the library innovation studios or something else that you're doing? Because the Library Innovation Studios, we, oh, okay. Um, we, we train, you come to our training and we take care of all that for you. Um, there's no extra cost for training. Um, you can, if you have an intern related to our Innovation Studios program that we've given you, they just come along just like everyone else. They are covered by, for all the costs for doing the training that we do for those studios. Not a problem. Just like any of your other staff or volunteers that you would send. Yep, no, yep. So some things that other libraries doing um, for programs. Uh, summer reading, of course, as I mentioned, um, both children, teen, and adult programs. We've had libraries mention they're going to do all three of those types. Um, your usual story time and crafts and activities for children. Uh, out, uh, Bookmobile, uh, Lincoln City Libraries here in Lincoln, um, has a summer outreach workers specific program, a specific entrance just to work um, with their Bookmobile. Uh, discussion groups, teen events, STEAM activities everywhere, all sorts of outreach. Um, and then we've got quite a few really cool special projects that um, libraries do. And this is the ones that I find the most interesting and most fun when they just have these amazing things they're doing. Uh, the John Nyhard State Historic Site is a site here, um, historic site at, up in Bancroft. And they have got a huge backlog. They are single staffed um, um, historic site. And they are working in collaboration with the public library. Um, to the, the, this intern is going to work part time. Part, part of the internship is going to be at the public library, and then they're going to send them over to the historic site to help them with cataloging, archive a huge backlog of um, donations that they've got. They've got so many they just can't keep up with them. So they're they're working with someone else to help them that. Uh, one library is using this as, and this is when I think hopefully might work into being a full time thing. They need a library children's librarian. So this is going to be their temporary children's librarian. Hopefully, it could become permanent. Uh, there's a coding club, NASA at my library grants that the library received. Uh, I think that's you, Laurie, goes ahead that is, they're going to have them work on. Um, an entre entrepreneur camp. Um, another library has got a huge expansion project that they have been granted, $12 million. And of course, all the staff in the library is involved in that, but the director wants, I guess, like kind of a personal assistant, someone they're going to help um, help them go through everything needed to do with this huge expansion project at the library um, and teach them basically everything from start to finish about how you go through all of this. Um, another cool collaboration is the Genealogical Society, South Central Genealogical Society. They also, similar to the um, NIHARDS, a site have a ton of things that need to be processed and organized and sorted and decide what to do with. So someone who might be into local history and genealogy would be good for that. And then some fun things, Dr. Seuss's birthday party, they want their intern to be in charge of, uh, community spelling bee, spell a palooza. <laughs> Um, and then another library has program they've been doing um, in, at, in conjunction with the local YMCA and they actually go to the YMCA to provide the children's services and children's programming. So they're going to have their intern work with that. Um, anything technology related, update or create for, from scratch a library website. Um, related to that genealogy collaboration, they're um, actually gonna, also going to have the intern do a genealogy and local history section on the library's website. So they're going to connect themselves even more with the Genealogical Association um, through that. And then everybody needs help with teaching computer classes. Um, Makerspace. Now this is Makerspace. As I mentioned before, we have our Library Innovation Studios grants, which is a whole separate uh, 
to the category. But for um, there are lots of libraries in the state that are not doing part of that with us and have their own makerspace. So at those places, they are also going to be doing um, having an intern to help um, staff it so that it can be open more, um, actually do the planning and promotion and programming, uh, creating tutorials for using it, um, and using the makerspace equipment itself to generate promotional items they specifically mentioned. That kind of shows off, look, this is what we did. You can do it too. And of course, social media and PR. You want to get the word out about everything the library does, and you want someone extra to help you do that. So we're going to having some uh, Facebook pages get updated, library newsletters, blog posts. Some one library mentioned specifically, they're going to get their want to get their library into Instagram. So they're going to have the intern create an Instagram account for the library. Um, writing articles, brochures, doing book displays, anything and everything that you could possibly do to help promote what's going on at the library. And then we have books, of course, still, in spite of what some people might say. Uh, I think uh, doing all your basic book-related things, shelving, working the circulation desk, uh, cataloging and processing the books, um, doing weeding project, uh, getting involved in selection, um, collection development of both children's, teen, and adults. So anything, you know, all of our backroom things that nobody sees that have to be, that are, that need to be done to keep the library going, we've got some people that are going to use this specifically want to use their interns for that. Um, and then actually working with the customers in general, the usual day-to-day -day things that you do. You know, we I listed a whole bunch of fun projects there, new things, but working the desk, helping them use the computers, helping them access um, anything online, um, using the resources in the library, doing interlibrary loan. A couple of libraries mentioned we're going to get them working in interlibrary loan. I love that. <laughs> So that's just some ideas. These are the things that are coming up in this this year's grants of what they mentioned and what they want to do. Um, there are this is a list of the locations that are getting our general internship grants this year. All the different cities, Lincoln Cities um, did six different applications. They do they have one at each of the branches plus the bookmobile. So we've got um, I think this was thirty four applications. And then the Library Innovation Studios grant recipients, these are the ones that are specifically getting a grant, a, an intern just to work specifically with the Innovation Studios. Um, so this is the makerspace equipment that we're putting into libraries for a limited amount of time throughout the year. And each of these libraries will be getting a $1,000 grant to have an extra person that they can pay to help them out with that. <sighs> All right, so Andrew, sure, you said bookmobile. Are you guys getting a bookmobile or are you just excited about Lincoln Cities? <laughs> yeah. All right, yep, and the NASA ones, all right. Ah, just excited about it, great. Maybe someday you'll have one out in the city. <laughs> all right, so any other questions? Uh, anything you want to know, anything I haven't answered, anything you want to share about anything you're doing at your libraries. Um, as I said, we're just getting started with this. I just emailed everyone earlier this month who received the grant. We are working on the paperwork. I've got it right here. Actually, the letters we're updating and getting everything we need to mail out to you. So you can start officially signing off on them. So look for that. If you have any other questions as we're getting more into this, I am your contact now for the internship grant program. Give me a call, shoot me an email, whatever you need, um, and I can help you out. Uh, oh, we have a question. Okay, do you know when our library received the Innovation Studio grant? The Innovation Studio one, um, for those of you that are in the Innovation Studios program, I'm trying to find the sheet that I had that had that. You will receive your funding right before you are due to have your equipment installed. So right now, um, that's not really good. somewhere I have it. Anyway, um, so for all of everyone in the general grant, which is this list of libraries, these are the ones that we're going to be working on the paperwork right now to get out to you. Um, hopefully by the end of this week, maybe give me till next week if I to um, um, that's so we can get you guys started with what you're doing with these ones starting up in April potentially for the innovation studios um, the makerspace one the innovation studios grants um, we will reach out to you right before each of your training is due um, and the, right before you are supposed to have your installation 
to um, get you your, uh, let's see, and I know I have a sheet here that shows me this. Yeah, that would have been more. <gasps> Found it. Okay. So, for example, right now we are working this month um, in uh, January and the beginning of February. Uh, Geneva, Central City, and Kimball are our first three libraries in the, the beginning of this year who are getting their training and their installation. So they've already received the um, paperwork from me about their grant. Um, uh, as you each come up, that is when you would be getting yours. Um, Shadron, you're due in uh, July, so it'll be right before that that we'd reach out to you to get your training done. Um, your, um, and um, Actually, Shadron and Hastings, you're both asking, yeah. Um, you're both in the same group. So June, July is when your uh, installation is supposed to be. So right before that, we'd reach out to you about the in getting you the money for your intern. And um, your training is going to be sometime in May. Uh, we'll, you know, things will be nailed down closer to the date. <laughs> Anything else you need to know right now while we're still here? Type in the questions, let me know. Not, um, I think we can wrap it up for today's show. And I'm going to pop over here also to the Library Commission page and um, our Encompass Live website. I was going to show you. So that'll wrap it up for everything about internships. Um, let me know if you have any questions and you know more about it. Um, as I said, we'll get your paperwork out to you soon. So that will wrap it up for today. And I'm going to go now to our Encompass Live website where you can see, I want to show you, uh, the archive of this will be here if you um, want to watch the re recording of this or if you have other staff in your library who are going to be involved in your internship and you want to have them see what we did um, on our archives here. They're listed right underneath our upcoming shows. Today's will be right at the top here at the list. And I will have the PowerPoint presentation that I use and the recording of today's show will be posted right there. But it should be done by the end of the day today. I'll send you all an email, let you know when it's available there for you to watch. This is our full archives here where we have everything going back to the very beginning of Encompass Live, which started in January 2009. So you can search our archives for other topics too. Um, and you'll know, please do note when you are looking at our archives, we do have everything dated. We do have all of our archives going back to the very beginning. 2009. So there will be some old information in here, some outdated information. Uh, there may be websites or uh, resources that don't exist anymore. Uh, just keep that in mind. Look at the date of when it was originally broadcast to determine if this is something that I might need to like think about before I follow up on any of the resources that are here. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. See, I've got links to our Facebook page, which is over here. Uh, okay. Um, and I post, so if you're big on Facebook, you do like to use Facebook, you or your staff, give us a like and you'll get notifications. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. When our archives, our recordings are available, we post on here. There's a recording from the previous week. Um, so any reminders about anything will be on here. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like to keep up on things there. Right. And I uh, hope you join us for next week when our topic is You Make Me Want to Break Out. Sounds horrible, but no, it's fun. Escape rooms. <laughs> um, we're going to have a session next week. Uh, Meredith Six from the, uh, who's at the Mickle Middle School here in Lincoln, she is going to be with us to talk about the um, breakout rooms, um, the EDU breakout that they've been doing at the middle school. So um, if you're interested in setting up like that, something like that for your school or library, uh, please do sign up for next week's show and any of our other upcoming shows we have listed here. February and March are all on the calendar and booked. We even have April filling up, so you'll see those shows coming up too so um, please do um, sign up for anything all right any other last minute desperate questions you need to ask to me of me before we go no all right great well thank you so much everyone for attending let me know if you have any questions or anything about your internship grant that's what I'm here for and hopefully we'll see you another time on encompass live bye bye